Good morning, Atonement. <laughs> Welcome to worship on this uh, beautiful Memorial Day weekend Sunday. We are so very grateful to see you here this morning at 9.15. Well done. Well done, friends. Uh, please rise as you are able. We'll join in singing our gathering song. Um, we have a very special guest today. So if you hear an instrument you haven't heard in a while, it's because my mom is playing the organ. Yeah. So much thanks to Melissa Crouch for joining us for worship. You may be seated. You may be seated, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen beat me to it. Um, again, welcome to Atonement. Thank you for coming on this uh, beautiful Memorial Day morning, and uh, also welcome to those who have joined us um, online. Um, if you look at your short bulletin, there's a quick summary of uh, next week's events, as well as some longer-term events, so... Um, look at that each week, and, and there will be that list there for you to consult. Um, tomorrow, for some reason, the office will be closed. I think our staff deserves a, uh, at least a one-day um, break. Um, next Sunday, after the service at 1030, there is a kite flying social. Um, you're welcome all to attend that. I believe the Outdoor Ministries is the sponsoring group on that. So if they have a number of events planned through the summer, and I think they'll all be um, great ways to get together and, and enjoy some time. Um, wasn't it great to have that organ sound playing again? <laughs> and I know Kristen is excited to have her folks with, with us here today, too, so that's awesome. Um, if you got your recent commentator, there is a capital campaign report in there. And um, there's one thing we forgot, well, maybe a few things we forgot in that campaign. But when we met with a consultant, if you remember a couple of years ago, we had Dana Peterson with us. He reminded us to thank you as much as we possibly can for all the support um, that you have capital campaign and all of the ways that you support ministries at Atonement, whether it's uh, a monetary gift, your time or talents, um, all of those things are so much appreciated, and they really help Atonement do um, its overall missions to, to minister in this community that we have. 
So again, thank you for um, all of those gifts. Um, let me see, I have a couple of other folks coming up to give some announcements. Um, Tom? I wanted to thank uh, everybody that contributed to the flagpole fund uh, out there. The, the regular flagpole the may, did not arrive yet, so I put up a makeshift flag out there. And um, I'm going to bring it in and put it in, this, in the entryway after church, so we will have a flag here for tomorrow, but it will be inside because of stormy weather and other things. But I, some people really contributed generously to the flagpole fund. So we will have a flagpole. It's on order. It should be here in a week or so. We're moving into the electricity phase and water phase of the Memorial Garden area. We're waiting on another grant to come in, hopefully this week, so we can design all that sort of stuff. And I'm waiting on technical expertise from Butch and, and Bruce Hill on electricity for the light on the flag, security lights, lights for uh, the, the irrigation clock. So we, we have a lot going on out there, which would account for all the stakes that are driven in the ground. So thanks everybody who has contributed so far, and it's a work in progress. We're competing against the Welka ladies for <laughs> volunteer labor, because the Welka ladies are putting up their, their new 12 by 24 storage shed out there, Todd and Ryan and a bunch of the other folks are putting that up, so I have to wait for labor from those guys to come help me. So there's a lot going on around here <laughs> at the church this summer. So we're in the kind of crunch time with Vacation Bible School coming up on the 13th through the 17th. And we still need a couple more adult volunteers just for Thursday and Friday that week. Um, so if anybody's been considering it or is available during that time, we just need a couple station leaders to help fill in. And then um, we have a bulletin board out here um, if, for snack donations to help feed all those kids that are running around during that week. So those are some, a few ways that you guys could help out. Thank you. began with the call to worship. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let everyone who hears say, Come. And let everyone who is thirsty, Come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to, this, to these sayings says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of the saints. Amen. Amen. We stand for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all consolation and mercy. Come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess Confess that that we are are captive to sin sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by by what we have done and by what what we have have left left undone. We have not not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We have have not not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so So that that we may may delight in your your will and and walk in your ways to the the glory glory of your your holy name. name. Amen. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us 
even when we were dead to sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Our opening song, Beautiful Savior. Let us pray. O oh God, form the minds of your faithful people into your one will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. I didn't see any other kiddos, so I guess it's just mine up here. So I already know the answer to the question I was going to ask then. Do you guys play Legos? I know you play <coughs> Legos because we've stepped on them a lot of times. <laughs> so, the little characters in Legos are called minifigures. And here's one right here. You guys have these, right, Cora? Yeah, we have these. And here's one who's all taken apart. Can you help your brother? He'll help you, I should say, put that together. Yeah. So, I... When I saw these little Lego figures, I thought of our gospel reading today that talks about us all being a part of the whole. And this little mini figure, although each part has a purpose, just like each of us has a purpose and holds value on our own, we're even more special and more powerful together. Yeah, you guys are putting it together. So this little figure is made up of a bunch of parts. And just like us, we, it is when we put it together, it has more of a purpose. So Jesus talks about us being part of a whole with God. And Jesus 
and God are two pieces of a whole. So without God and without each other, all of us in here and all of us in the world, we certainly have value, but we're not complete. We're not as special and as impactful as when we join together, when we join others. And that's what's important about being part of a faith community like we have here. We have other people to join up with, to become whole with. So we are a bunch of pieces, but we belong together. So when we are all together, we can work better together. We are stronger. We can do more good and reach further into the world. Think about, this is kind of a silly thing to think about, but just like this comes apart and there's little pieces, hands, and everything comes off. Think about if you were just feet. If you were just a pair of feet, we wouldn't be able to have legs. Sorry, I'm getting some grins. <laughs> we don't have legs to move us, and there's no eyes to guide us where we're going. And that's kind of like when we try to just be a lone part. We don't have Jesus to guide us, to help us to get where we're going. We don't have each other to help us along. So when we join together and we become one, a community together in Christ, we are made stronger. You can give yourself a second. All right, so let's say a prayer. Dear God. Dear God. We thank you. We thank you. That we are made whole in you. That we are made whole in you. Help us to live in community. Help us to live in community. With each other. With each other. Help us to live in ways. Help us to live in ways. That make those around us. That make those around us. Whole and complete. Whole and complete. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 17. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus prayed. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who would believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me, I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Eavesdropping. We all have done it, haven't we? to listen in on another's conversation. This may occur accidentally, of course, when we are sitting in a restaurant or at an airport gate or while standing there in the grocery line when people nearby are talking loudly to one another or into a phone at a volume that they cannot help but be overheard, like it or not. That's accidental eavesdropping. There is also intentional eavesdropping whereby people intend, for some reason, to actually listen in on the conversation of others. 
espionage. Listening is the extreme form of this, the most secretive type of intentional eavesdropping. I mention this because this morning our Bible reading actually invites us to eavesdrop. We are to intentionally listen in on a conversation, a prayer actually, that Jesus is directing to God just prior to his betrayal and his arrest. Scholars name this as Jesus' high priestly prayer on the seventh and final Sunday of the Easter season. The church annually reads about one-third of this prayer as a final framing to the great Easter epic. In the beginning portion, Jesus prays for his contemporary followers. But here in this final portion that we have heard this morning, he prayers, prays for his future followers. In other words, he is praying now for you. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me. In this prayer, Jesus speaks of the unity and the love that exists between God the Creator and Jesus of Nazareth, the Son. They are one. They are unified in will, in purpose, love for the world. In this prayer, Jesus prays for the unity of his followers. The glory that you have given me, he says to God, I've given to them so that they may be one as we are one. I and them, you and me, that they may become completely one. Well, what does that all mean? What is the nature of such a unity? And frankly, as we look around at how divided people appear to be in today's world in so very many ways that we're all, frankly, aware of, we may wonder if Jesus' prayerful vision here could ever possibly become a reality. Or is it already a deeper reality beyond obvious recognition? Does unity mean uniformity? Does oneness mean sameness? On a light and humorous note as we think about this, I recall in hearing a prayer for unity of that Peanuts cartoon that was published by Charles Schultz years ago. It featured, in this case, the two characters of Lucy and Linus. Now, you all know Lucy and Linus, and you know the nature of each. In the first frame of the cartoon, the emboldened character, that would be who? Lucy. She turns to her younger brother, Linus, who always is carrying a what? A blanket. And she asks Linus to please change the television to a channel and a show that she, Lucy, wanted to watch. Linus happens to like the show he is currently watching, so he politely denies Lucy's request. In the second frame of the cartoon, Lucy becomes agitated. She raises her voice, as Lucy is known to do, and she asks Linus again to change the channel. Linus is annoyed with his sister and responds by saying, Lucy, what makes you think you can walk in here and just take over the television? We go to the third frame of the cartoon. Lucy is pictured by holding up her hand in front of Linus. She then says, Linus, what makes me think I can take over the television? I'm going to give you five good reasons. Do you see these little fingers, Linus? He holds his blanket tightly and nods. Well, individually, they are not much to behold, are they? But when I curl and unite these together into a single unit, 
Now we go to the final frame of the cartoon. Lioness simply asks Lucy, what channel do you want me to change it to? Is that what we mean by unity? On a more proverbial and didactic tone, when I hear of a prayer for unity, I do recall the story told of a father who had five sons. During their younger years, the sons did as siblings are apt to do. They fought, they scrapped, they competed against one another, sometimes to their own detriment. One day, after observing some of this scrapping that got a little bit out of hand, the father brought the boys together. He wanted to have a chat. He wanted to visit with them about the importance of sticking together and supporting one another instead of always fighting and being separated. Well, rather than offer the typical parental lecture on the topic, he instead handed each one of the boys a single stick. And after each received a stick in his hand, the father instructed them to take that stick and to just snap it over their knees, which they each easily did. Next, he gathered five sticks together, tied them all up in a tight bundle, and he handed this bundle off to the eldest son. And he instructed that son to take that bundle and to, again, snap it over his knee, which the son tried to do and failed. Handed it to the second, failed, to the third, to the fourth, and then to the fifth, who confidently thought he could do it, but failed. The father took the bundle back in hand and simply said, do you see that? If you stick together as you grow up, you're going to be better off. Go through life alone, divided from one another, though, and you will be vulnerable to happenings that may leave you broken. Maybe that's a little closer to what we mean by unity. But what about the unity that Jesus prays for here? Again, what does that mean? What does that look like? As I asked earlier, does unity equate with uniformity? oneness, with sameness. Within the history of the Christian church, unity has been elusive, to say the least, and has sometimes mistakenly been equated with uniformity. Within the Apostle Paul's letters to the earliest faith communities, we have ample evidence of how slippery unity is. Paul writes of all kinds of squabbles and factions and disagreement among those pioneer followers of Jesus the Christ. Neither oneness nor unity seem to be fitting, acting descriptors of any of those communities. And then we advance in years. Later on to the year 1054, and we have what? This enormous schism. The Western Church, the Roman Catholic Church, dividing from the Eastern Church, the Orthodox, that fracture still holds robustly. They can hardly go on each other's territory in terms of the church officials. So we advance in years, say, oh, another 500 or so, and we have in Europe the heir of the what? The Reformation. Protesters, Protestants, bifurcating from the Roman Church, and we advance a little further into our own nation's history, our own nation's borders. And we look around us today, the number, the nature of Christian denominations and the wide differences between them can be bewildering and in some cases discouraging. And if we look a little backwards a few years, we come across a gentleman named Henry Melchor Muhlenberg, he was that German immigrant pastor credited with organizing Lutheran Christians across North America during the Revolutionary period. He had noble dreams for a united church through means of having every congregation worship 
out of one liturgical hymnal. Like a hymnal is going to bring people together, hymnals divide people, don't they? Even for his own time, that dream was as much unattainable as it was anachronistic. Even working with immigrant Germans among English-speaking colonies, Muhlenberg could hardly have imagined the multi-ethnic and diverse mix of people who now comprise the United States of America. The oneness that Jesus prays for differs from what Pastor Muhlenberg sought. The oneness that Jesus prays for is not to be equated with sameness, nor is the concept of unity to be equated with uniformity. When the Apostle Paul was addressing divisions within the early Christian church, such as at locations of Rome and Corinth, he clearly recognized the gift and the import of human diversity, while also bearing witness to a reality of oneness that all of the baptized had already been blessed with in Christ. Now you are the body of Christ, individually members of it, Paul says to that church in Corinth. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but many. And with that, Paul goes on to explain the vital role that each differing member of the body has in relation to the one unified body. Paul recognized that the diversity of God's people was a great gift. No call at all to uniformity, but he also named the reality already that was in place, which was this deep, relational, God-given unity within the one body of Christ. Paul named and reminded the people, reminds us of that reality. Even if the people, even if we do not always recognize or live out that reality as God desires or as Jesus prays for, in the language of calling, each member of this one body, each of you has been given by God unique vocations, purposes in life. The diversity of all of these vocations is a great gift to the world. And with that, there is also a God-given unity in it, in, with, and under our callings, these very essential callings for love of God, love of neighbor, the calling to be instruments of peace, the calling to be bearers of grace. There is tremendous unity in our mutual calling. So this morning we are eavesdropping. We overhear this conversation between Jesus and the one that he intimately dares to name as Father. It is the prayer of Jesus and the work of God that has already brought the vision of this prayer into a reality, even if you can't quite see it. This is not something, therefore, for us to accomplish. This is something God has already established and for which we are grateful. The glory that you have given me, Jesus says to God, I have given them so that they may be one. I in them and you in me, that they may be completely one. So many the gifts, many the people, many the hearts that really do yearn to belong, to be one. So let us be servants then, one to another, signs of God's kingdom that has come. Christ, we pray. Christ, be our light.
We'll remain seated for our hymn of the day. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. Christ, we are light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, we are light, shine in your church, gather to Let us join together and profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy God, make your people one as you and your Son are one. Extend the gifts we have been given by your Spirit to all people, especially those experiencing division or questioning your love. Keep in our minds those who have died in war, both military and civilians. May we honor them by seeking peaceful solutions to the conflicts that arise among nations and people. Shower your peace on war-torn areas of the world, especially Ukraine. Grant freedom to all who are overwhelmed by chronic illness, depression, or constant worry. 
We pray especially for Amy and the family of Ozzie Brenstall, Sherman, Debbie, Carol, Audrey, Karen, and Diane. Open them to receive health and salvation in Christ, Jesus, through the Spirit's gift of faith. Peace, peace, holy peace, pour out your peace on us. Peace, peace, holy peace, pour out your peace on us. Stir imagination and understanding throughout the church in the work of poets, theologians, and hymn writers. Lead us into new visions and fresh expressions of your presence. This week, we pray also for Atonement members Betty, Ruth, Roger and Carol, Nick, Brittany and Boyd, and Robert and Pat. We lift their prayers of need and thanksgiving, which are known to you. Be with all who mourn the loss of life from violence, those across, across the country, and especially in Buffalo, New York, and in Texas. Surround us with your compassion and move us toward healing and justice. Unite us with the saints who have died and have been raised in Christ. Today we pray for Amy Severson and her family on the death of her father, Ozzie Brenso. Train us to wait with eager longing for Christ to come again, even as we sense his presence with us now. O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Please share the peace with those around you in any way that you can. Come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal.
There's hope for the hopeless and all those who strayed. Come sit at the table, come taste the grace. There's rest for the weary, rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't cure. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As a matter in safety and well-being for all, we'll be communing with the individual elements again this morning at least. And we invite you to wait and share in the meal together until instructed to do so following the Lord's Prayer. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. Taking the elements, this is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, Bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn, Amen. Please rise as you are able as we join in our sending song today. I believe in the song. I believe. 
peace and serve the Lord. We bring, bring the, the hope, hope we share in Christ, Christ to all. all. Thank <laughs> you. 